calling tonight's meeting to order. When do the open public meeting end? On Wednesday, January 12th, 2022, notice of this meeting was emailed to the press and the current of Egg Harbor Township. Notice was also delivered that day to the Egg Harbor Township clerk and posted on the bulletin board in Township Hall. Mrs. Bongiorno? Here. Mr. Del Barca? Here. Mrs. Gilbert Floyd? Here. Ms. Hyman? Here. Mr. Ireland? Here. Mr. Price? Here. Mr. Seppi? Here. Mrs. Sullivan? Here. And Mrs. Salag? Here. Okay, we stand for the fly salute and we remain standing for a couple minutes for uh, an employee that passed is Mrs. Burl Smith. All right, got me. All right, all right. Good evening and welcome, everyone. It's so exciting to see some smiling faces and students. We don't always get to see students in here, so it's awesome. You must be going to be recognized for something. So we're going to get to that right away. So these, these are the great things that are going on. We don't always do a superintendent's report um, in this first meeting of the month, but this is a special time. Um, we want to honor our two. 2022 fall champions and we're going to start with the Egg Harbor Township High School boys soccer team so if coach Lambert and his coaching staff can come on up here they are the 2022 Cape Atlantic League American Division champions but well you can come first and then you talk a little bit just briefly what you want and what it's about bring them up I guess Thank you so much. Uh, whew, didn't think we'd be going first, so uh, get comfy. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, we'll make this short and sweet. Uh, it is always nice to be uh, honored here this evening. Um, I'd like to thank the Board of Ed for having us here tonight. Dr. Gruccio, Dr. Santilli, uh, Dr. Charlton. Uh, it's good to see you. Uh, our athletic directors, Mr. Rutledge, Ms. Perone. All right, and our school principal, Ms. Jackie Krugno. Uh, your support year after year, uh, you know, none of this is possible really without the support of you guys. Uh, none of it's possible without my great uh, coaching staff and Coach Matori, uh, Coach Heenan, who's not here this evening. His little guy was sick, uh, so I told him to stay home. Uh, but there's a, lot, there's a lot that goes into, you know, being a conference or a divisional champion. Uh, and a lot of it has to do with uh, you people in the room here this evening. We have great parents who are here uh, tonight supporting these young men throughout their career. Uh, we have a lot of seniors here tonight who will be moving on to uh, do great things in the future, uh, but are, are a big part of what EHT is uh, and what we have been. Uh, so again, support uh, from you guys here. There's a lot of good looking faces here tonight. Uh, I'm really excited for you guys and, and teams to be recognized and honored as well. Uh, it's really cool to see HT do such great things. Uh, you don't always hear about the positive things we're doing on and off the field, but uh, a little bit about these guys. Uh, I do have to give a shout out to my family, my wife at home, and my children for all their support. Uh, I don't see our mascot in the room, but Mighty, you guys have probably seen Mighty around town. I don't know where Mighty is, but we, we got to say thank you to Mighty. Mighty was at a lot of our games and probably at a lot of your games as well. So wherever Mighty's flying around, thank you. Uh, but the men of the hour, or the men of the minute right here behind me, uh, you know, we range from freshmen uh, to seniors who have been in this program for either one year or four. Uh, but each and every one of them have a big part in what, in what we do. 
Uh, and what we are are students before athletes, and these guys know that. So in order to you know, have the privilege to play on the field and do great things, they have to get it done in the classroom. So these guys grind uh, on and off the field uh, to get the work done to be able to play at such a high level. I'm really proud of them for that. Um, you know, we have, um, I'll start in order here, to my left, Coach Maturi. All right, thank you. We have Mr. Ryan Evenson, a junior. He's coming back. We're really excited. All right, senior, Joey Martin, three-year varsity player. All right, junior coming back, Matt Sanchez. Another junior coming back. All right, Mr. Mazer. All right, Chase Mazer. Uh, Gilly just showed up. Gilly's a senior. All right, three-year varsity player, 15 goals, five assists this year. Uh, he was a lot of fun to watch. Our goalkeeper, senior Brett Barnes, uh, Cape Atlantic League, uh, honorable mention, eight shutouts this year. All right, Jude, Jude Urban is a senior. Uh, he came to us as a transfer uh, two years ago. He was a big part of what we did last year, uh, winning the conference and again this year. Uh, he comes to us from another school, we don't need to mention, but he found his, his true family, his true brotherhood here at EHT. All right, Mr. Ryan Bailey's a senior. Mr. Guy can do it all uh, and would play anywhere for us on the field. Uh, senior Joseph Velarde, same thing, utility guy, can play anywhere, do anything. All right, senior Ricky, you know, again, these guys, it, it's nice to have a group of men that can play anywhere and are willing to do anything for the program. All right, our one and only freshman, Lucas Cross. We're hoping to be back here the next three years with this guy. He's going to be a big part of what we do. All right, we have our two uh, other captains. Brett Barnes is one. All right, Lucas Leonez is a four-year varsity player. Really help us put EHT, uh, get us to where we are. Uh, solid, going to play at the next level, and uh, we're really excited to see him do that. All right, and senior captain, Nate. Nate Beers back, 27 goals, 10 assists. I mean, these two players here, all South Jersey, all state, all conference players. Uh, but these guys will be the first to tell you you can't do it without a supporting cast. Uh, these guys make my job a lot easier. Uh, and uh, I can't thank them enough. And I wish this whole crew the best, especially our seniors, uh, moving forward. And uh, again, thank you all for being here. I thank you for your support. Uh, if you ever have a chance to come out and watch us play, uh, I, think, I think you'll like what you see. Uh, so thank you again. If, coach, coach, congratulations. I think your, your board's there. But um, hopefully these, these young men serve as role models for some of our middle school students here. It takes a, hot, a lot of work and a lot of pride to be successful and to be champions. And uh, to the guys, congratulations. We're very proud of you. And thank you for representing A Harbor Township High School. So congratulations again. Okay, moving on to the boys cross country team. Coach Lucio. So Coach Joe Lucio, uh, head coach of the cross country team with his coaching staff here and his uh, young men who ran their hearts out to a championship this year and he'll tell, you, tell us more about it. Thank you, Dr. Guccio board and administration for having us. I will be faster than Coach Lambert was in my speech tonight. And whenever I race him in a 5K, I'm also faster than him. Um, I have to do a quick side note because it means so much to me to see our Alder Middle School cross country team here. Back in 2010, when the district dealt with really difficult cuts from the state, we lost our middle school team for a few years. And I tried every avenue to get that team back. You know, I, we finally had a lot of roadblocks. And finally, in 2017, I, I realized if you need something done, you got to go to the boss. And I went to Dr. Guccio, and I pleaded with her. And we got our teams back at Alder and Fernwood. And it's already paying off huge dividends. Our numbers are going up. And um, it directly correlated to our team's um, victory this year. A little bit about the team. I'm quite positive that this is the first three and six team to ever be um, celebrated at a board meeting. Um, our top seven runners in our regular season competition, every meet 
we had a sickness, an injury, something just came up. And about halfway through the season, we weren't running with the potential that the coaching staff and I thought we had. We had a um, boys only meeting, right? We sent the girls out on a run and we met in my classroom and we locked the door and shut the blinds and we had a heart to heart, these young men and I and Coach O'Neill and Coach McLaughlin. And we kind of let it all out there. We said, we got four or five weeks left. Let's go for it. And they did. And at the county meet against the mainland team that beat us three times early in the season, they ran their hearts out for 3.1 miles. Almost every single kid on the team PR'd. And we beat mainland by five points. And it was sweet. I'll just uh, introduce the young men up here real quick. Uh, first is uh, sophomore Cam Koyoga, who had an incredible season. Next to him is senior, our only senior up here, Ryan Taylor. He's the fourth Atlantic County individual champion in school history, joining um, some of the Mount Rushmores of EHT distance runners, um, Vinny Del Conti, uh, Steve Egley, and Joe Lacavera Switzer, who are household names for distance running in EHT. And then we have uh, junior Amir Halim, sophomore Aaron Wagner, junior Theo Lucy, never underdressed freshman Matthew McDevitt, and, and junior Johnny Fox. Again, thank you for all the support from their parents, from the community, from our family. Thank you, everybody, so much for having us tonight. The lesson learned here, never give up, right, guys? Never give up. The stars are there for you to reach for. So great job, congratulations, and once again, thank you for representing Egg Harbor Township High School at the Atlanta County meet, and we walk away as champions, or run away in your case as champions. <laughs> good job, good job. All right, <clears throat> now it's time to uh, honor our middle school athletes who were successful in their endeavors this fall, and we'll begin with the Alder Avenue Boys Cross Country Team. Well, here, here's our feeder program right here. Walking up here as champions. Our coach, Alexis Dilks. Hi, everybody. Good, how are you? Tell us a little bit about these young men. Well, <laughs> um, they're all wonderful young men that are, I have four boys that are moving on to the high school. Um, I coach both boys and girls. So it's uh, a little dynamically different. Um, but we had a great team, everyone got along. Um, <laughs> it was a very, very um, difficult year with busing and schools canceling. And so they, they pulled through and they did wonderful um, and undefeated. We had, um, the, let's see, who's going? JD is going to the high school. Um, Ben's going to the high school. Steven's going to the high school. And then the rest of these boys are all mine. Um, we're missing two boys tonight. Daniel Speck, um, he is with the band over at Fernwood tonight. Uh, he was here for a little while, but he was afraid his band teacher would be upset, so he left. <laughs> and Caden Wood also is over with band tonight. So they're the other two athletes that we're missing tonight. Um, other than that, did you guys want to? Say anything? <laughs> <laughs> all right, well, I want to thank you all for, um, of course, the board, Dr. Guccio, for having me as the coach. I absolutely love it. I love the boys and the girls together, and uh, the parents, shout out to you. You've been fantastic. Um, I can't say enough. I think the uh, soccer coach said everything for the rest of the coaches here today. <laughs> so I just want to thank you again. Thank you. Here you go, here's certificates to honor your hard efforts and most of all uh, for representing the Egg Harbor Township School District. Got them all? We have Ben. And Ryan. That's all right. Karen. The proud moment. You guys want to switch? <laughs> Elias. And last but not least, Stephen. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Go. Here's your Alder Avenue Boys Cross Country Champion. Great job, guys. Keep running. All right. Hopefully, everybody's here. I had to save the best for last. I was told. 
Alder Avenue girls soccer team are the Atlantic County Junior High League champions for 2022. And uh, Coach Cucci, are you here? Yes. There you are. Come on up and <laughs> see them. All right, Coach, tell us a little bit about how these ladies uh, eat out this year. And here's your license. Okay, good evening, everyone. Thank you, Dr. Gruccio. Thank you to the board. I also want to send a special thank you to all the parents and guardians uh, for your tireless effort of uh, getting everyone to practice and to games. We really appreciate it. Um, this was a great season. Um, our team only lost one game, tied one game, and won the rest. So. Uh, it was a very impressive uh, season for these young ladies here. We have a nice mixture of 6th, 7th, and 8th graders, as you could see. We have some that were not able to attend tonight um, for other uh, reasons, but um, we have a nice turnout tonight. And um, one of the nice things about this year was the ability to have the 6th graders play, uh, which, which really helped with the numbers and helped with the overall program. So. Um, it was a great season. Um, the dedication and, and teamwork and effort was wonderful. And uh, I really look forward to next season already. So great job, ladies. Thank you. <laughs> Megan Johnson, come on down. Madeline Johnson. Bryn Conley. Avery Schultz. Caitlin Hager. Marissa Baxter. Narai Omar. Julia Soroka. Corey Bird, Gianna Gallego, Marissa Mazur, Caitlin Wiggins, Emmy Knack, Lily Bertino. And Harper Cross. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Gruccio. Great job, ladies, um, on, a, on an excellent season. I appreciate your attendance tonight to be honored because this is a very, very special endeavor. Um, your efforts are appreciated and all your hard work paid off. And I also like to thank the parents, not only of of uh, the girls soccer team here, but any parents from the other sports. You know, the uh, kids are successful um, behind the support of a great parents, all right? So thank you for taking them to and from, for uh, wiping the tears and going along with the cheers and all that stuff. Um, they're, they're great parents behind uh, champions. So uh, don't forget that, all right? So congratulations again, and uh, thanks for coming tonight. Appreciate it. Great night, get your homework done.
Okay, we're going to get moving on to the um, presentations from the supervisors. Again, we're in, involved in the budgeting process, so what you're going to hear is presentations from the Department of Supervisors on uh, their their plans and their goals, where they uh, what they aspire to do, where they've been, uh, where they need to go. All right, so it gives you an idea as you're budgeting. So as we're budgeting, so uh, I encourage the board to take notes and hold questions to the end. Here you go. So we're going to begin with athletics and activities. We have Mr. Kevin Rutledge, our athletic director, and assistant athletic director, Ms. Nicole Perron. Thank you, Dr. Guccio. Thank you, board. How do we? This is why we make a good team. <laughs> uh, so um, first off, this second year, uh, myself and Ms. Barone have gotten together here uh, to kind of lead the athletics and phys ed side of things. Uh, has been so much smoother in the first year, obviously, now that we have our feet on the ground and looking at what not only where we are, not only where we were, but now where we are and where we want to go. Um, so we pride ourselves in every time we talk to our coaches um, and the coaches and the teams that just left us, uh, that we teach life lessons through sports and activities. Um, it's obviously I'm going to be a little biased, but I feel that in our profession we get to have the most impact on our kids because we get to have those experiences that you can't duplicate in a classroom. Uh, so that's kind of the mantras that we run our health and phys ed and uh, athletics and activities through. Um, so going forward, uh, we are big on vertically integrating our curriculum. So we want to make sure that what they're doing when the minute they get into Egg Harbor Township schools is what they're doing when they leave us. Uh, so we're right now developing programs to get down into those elementary schools, to the middle schools, and uh, just like Coach Lucio was speaking about before, uh, it was a big uh, opportunity for him back before we were up here to make sure that the middle schools had the same programs so they're hearing the same voice and that they understand what it's like to be a high school athlete uh, because there's a very big difference between our rec programs to the middle school programs and then of course to our varsity programs. And it gets more and more challenging as it goes and more and more difficult for our coaching staffs. Uh, so, a couple things that we're uh, implementing right now. Um, now, this is a working title here, but students, uh, student athletes outreach and academic reinforcement. Uh, something we're implementing now is trying to get our athletes and our uh, and our leaders in the high school building down to the elementary schools to, uh, whether that be to in the reading program and the media center, whether that be in the classroom, helping out in any way, shape, or form, uh, to create that bond and that leadership and that role responsibilities. But not only that, but as they leave us and they move on, it's ingrained in them now to give back to their community that raised them. Um, our huddle cameras that we uh, integrated the, the budget last year are up and running. Um, and these have been so far a huge success. We are now able to live stream all of our events that are in our main gymnasium and on our stadium uh, throughout the, on our YouTube channel. Uh, that's something that I know a lot of parents have difficulties making games, whatnot. They can see it. They have family out of town. They can always see our games. They can always view them. They can always go to the YouTube channel and find them. Uh, but from an athletic side of things, our coaches now have coaches, uh, coaching film to break down. They can um, submit that back and forth. They can learn from it. They can build from it. And of course, our student athletes uh, can create ESPN-like highlight films that they can put on their recruiting transcripts that they send to schools and coaches. Um, we are continuing to build on our summer youth camps, our in-season sport clinics. Um, and improve the quality of our uniforms rotations. We just uh, now got in our first round of Under Armour uniforms. We have a sponsorship that we acquired last year through Under Armour. Uh, we are now an Under Armour school that will be uh, providing those from sixth grade up to uh, 12th grade so that our uniforms now can match the quality of kids that we have. Uh, we are expanding community partnerships. We, uh, Nicole and myself, have gone out to the youth program meetings, to the Reckon Park meetings to make sure that we are, again, vertically integrating what we're doing at the high school down at the youth level. Uh, and we're also improving student achievement using the training facilities and equipment, and video statistics, so on and so forth, what I mentioned earlier. Um, going forward, some of the things that we have uh, uh, inventoried or looked at is some of our major um, equipment facility rotations that have kind of uh, lacked the rotation that they needed to be successful in, in, in working for us. I know we have some scoreboard issues that we're going to be working on. Um, and also our weight training equipment. Um, to the left is what we have, and to the right is uh, what we hope to have. So that's something that I think is going to be uh, crucial to the success of our kids and our athletes. 
Ms. Perrone? Okay, all right, so I'm gonna talk about um, our plan for health and physical education, K to 12, um, what we've done over the last year and what we plan to continue to do and build on. Um, we, there was something there. <laughs> was, I, oh, I think it's, it's dark ink, I think that's why you can't see it. Anyway, um, the district partnerships where we, um, we were, took part in a, in a um, partnership with the HERO campaign. We had a, um, a, a grant last year for, um, from Atlantic Care that helped with some schools. Um, I'm gonna help, just keep talking. talking. Just keep talking. Well, I don't know the trains. I'll go back to that slide. <laughs> anyway. Um, we did revise the, there it is. There. <laughs> yeah. <Tax support. laughs> Weird. Anyway, so turn your health into wealth. This was last year. We were granted $2,700 and $300 went to every school in the district um, to improve our health curriculum. Um, for health and phys ed for this year, we implemented new textbooks, um, six to 12. K to 12, or I'm sorry, K to five, we're looking at um, health, new health curriculum being taught by the health and physical education teachers. Um, the new standards were implemented and revised, and the curriculum was revised this past summer. Um, letters went, went out to parents regarding the health curriculum, the new textbooks, and new standards. Um, <clears throat> to prioritize the important ideas and core processes that are central to the comprehensive health and physical education um, in our classrooms. For this, this year and working into next year, uh, we're still working to research and create health and physical education electives with concentrations in um, walking for wellness, stretching for wellness, team and sport specific classes at the high school level, improving our strength and conditioning program, having more lifetime fitness and wellness activities K to, through 12, not just at the high school. We are um, starting to plan out and develop our unified uh, PE curriculum and how to implement that in the high school. We're also looking to have lifeguard certification courses being offered to um, high school students through and during their PE classes, and also juniors being certified in CPR and first aid at the time of completion of health. Junior health right now has first aid and CPR in it, so we, why not have them certified with paper in hand when they come out of that? Um, we are hoping to get one more teacher to help with adaptive and unified PE. Um, this past year, we worked with, like I said, the HERO campaign with a driving simulator presentation that came in. They're coming in throughout the year to, they first worked with seniors, then, their, then juniors, and then sophomores. Um, last year, we were awarded $1,000 in grant money to implement um, safe driving activities. We put in for a grant this year to get our own driving simulator for sophomore driver's ed. Um, hopefully, fingers crossed, we'll get that. Um, and then for our juniors and seniors, we again, at, for the third or fourth year, I'm not sure, we have the Not Even Once program with Ed Carper Township Police Department, or the NEO program, program where they come in and talk about, um, it's basically a drug education program for juniors and seniors, and it's throughout the year. Uh, and that is it for us. Dr. Kadetsky. Uh, I'm sure they have questions for you first. No, I don't think they do. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, I do have one. one. Yeah, we're going we're gonna to save our questions until the end. Uh, good evening. So I, I want to preface this with uh, going back to you know, with the support of the board and the community and, and uh, with an excellent, excellent team of teachers. I have every single thing that was when I reviewed. I went back and I looked at the five-year plan that I had to present to you five years ago. Mm -hmm. um, we, no, we met or exceeded every single thing that was on there. So everything that you're going to see here is where we are from the major tenants of those, that, that five-year plan that cost the most money. 
um, so that when you're looking at the budget stuff, you can see what's going where and why and, and to whom. When I, when, I, when I stood before you when I first got hired and I said, I really think we need to do digital art animation and we bought five Microsoft Surface Pros that year. We now have, um, uh, I wanna show you an example of what that animation class has become where we are now with uh, 22 Surface tablets and uh, the start of Surface tablets and iPads down in K through, K through five. I can't really go on until that video shows because it connects to the next the tenants of the next slide. You broke my presentation. I did, and it's just that you didn't share it with Steve. It's okay. Okay. This is real life, everyone. Teaching, virtual teaching. So what I do is I change it to, to open access for anybody. Instead of just people with the link. Did we block him already? Like, I thought he still had a little more time left. <laughs> Quickest one I've ever done. <laughs> yeah, do a song. Please. Definitely don't want this. All right, there you go. No, it's it check us before. Just we can we can if we have. to show you is that our students, uh, when, I, when the, the, the headlines of those slides are the art says CTE, uh, in the past if you took an art class, an arts class or in our department here, it's because you like to do it, something that you like doing it so that you can you know, do displays and exhibits for your parents. But there was no connection to what was going on in the arts and what was going on in a 21st century job market where what we once knew as, you know, as marketing is now audience development and audience engagement is the, one of the biggest parts. That. So we wanted to make sure that if, that the arts were obviously for the arts, but also it uh, could be used for could be used for that. And you know, we're talking when you're talking about video games or just again every every major brand and every major business they don't they don't take out an advertisement anymore in a magazine so much, but they want everything is everything is on media and it's still not playing. Oh, okay, there's one of them. So yeah, this is something a freshman, an intro to what we call EDAD, Experiencing Digital Art and Design. This is something that they were able to make. Uh, that it's basically bringing things to life and, and animating, uh, animating stuff. So these are, these are samples of what our kids are doing in the class every day. So yeah, 20 minutes of work and waiting so you can see that six second video. <laughs> but it's a good video. It was great. Yeah. You're gonna watch it again. <laughs> Slam. Letting me. Right, so this is what our lab looks like now. It used to be we were in a we were in a art, we were in a drawing and painting classroom, and they just brought their tablets to their desks. Now that everybody's on Chromebooks, the computer labs aren't as necessary a necessary mandated space all the time. So we converted E113 into our EDAD lab. Not only is it our lab, we start off with one section of this. We now have six full sections of of uh, intro to experiencing digital art and design, and one section out honored and one full-time teacher and one one-fifth teacher covering all that. So it's, it's booming um, and it's, it's doing everything that we needed it and asked it to do, which is why I'll be needing and asking you for more Microsoft Surface tablets and the budget. It's not just that, it's the software. The, if you want to stay current on the Adobe Flash uh, and all the, the things that go with that, and there's all different new drawing tablets that, that, can, um, that incorporate into that style of spend, stuff like that. Uh, it's been a learning experience for me too. Like I'm a musician, so to be able to, to you know, I've sat in some of the classes so I can speak knowledgeably about it and understand and enjoy it. 
So it's not all digital art and computers. Um, Mr. Santilli, one of my very first meetings, uh, when we had our first administrators meeting, he said something, he said, hire rock stars. And we were reading a book, and it just always stuck with me, hire rock stars. And we waited, it took us like seven months, Dr. Charles, remember, till we got the art teacher that we really wanted. I was like, I just don't want to get anybody. Um, we waited and waited, and we ended up stealing this dude here from DC Comics. Uh, made a career there. The left there, the Batman marrying Robin with the Prince-type Joker, uh, he, he showed up his interview with this comic book, and I was like, oh, I'm a comic book nerd, and he said, look closer, and I looked, and he drew that. And he said, I want to teach you, I want to come here uh, because I like it here. And he said, I want to come here because I want to teach your kids that you don't have, there's no such thing as a starving artist if you really love it. So um, it, it, it's booming, like the kids are really buying into like drawing and painting. It used to be a place where like, look, you have to take this, you don't play an instrument and you have to take this to graduate, you have to take an art to graduate. So you're going and drawing and painting and that's not happening anymore at all. And you know, we're showing them that, you know, this kid likes comics. So Mr. McNulty's like, listen, if you like drawing comics, let me show you how to draw comics. And I, I followed this project over three weeks, and that's that's like a heck of a Superman. That's like kryptonite proof up there. So that's what's going on in our non-digital art world. It's still so we're still keeping like the basic, the old arts that we knew when we were in school. So going forth again, arts for a career. Uh, there's so much sound engineering and so much design, and video game music is a, is a whole thing of itself. We now have Eagle Records, which is on my five-year plan, fully up and running. That's our. We did a prototype booth to like beta the program. Now we have like a full end, uh, full end sound booth. That station over there on my right, your left, there's five of those MIDI stations now that are used for keyboard for teaching and have um, uh, Audacity and uh, Ableton and ProLogic so that the kids are learning how to use uh, all this stuff. I am getting really good at this too. I actually, actually turn on several of these things and power them up. So I'm really, I'm exploding through that learning curve as well. So that's what's going on at our digital music lab. Uh, through there for the kid that might not play violin but still wants to be part of the music industry and you know going forward Rowan has a booming Rowan industry a uh, music industry program that we want to start linking up to we go through there do you remember like the summer of COVID like that that board meeting where we said we're going to hire a kindergarten theater teacher and it was uh we took a big big risk and it was a big big game with that risk and I can honestly say that this is probably like the favorite part of these kids uh experience at school because it's it's an amazing program and to watch five-year-olds have to improvise and to act out their emotions and to act out the emotions of someone else they're talking to. Because your, your capacity, without lecturing you, your capacity, your aptitude, like if you think of your creativity as a glass, and you can, you'll fill that glass. Like the size of that glass is determined by the time you're seven years old. So some of us are gonna have a big stein. Uh, some of us may only have like a shot glass or a Dixie, you know, bathroom Dixie cup, and that's all you're going to have. So you were developing this aptitude for creativity with the with the students and being able to talk. The other thing you're doing is just teaching them how to talk, like to how to how to communicate. And um, but what happens is they love it, and then we stop. We you know, we the favorite thing. And there's first graders like I walked past Mr. Aponte in the hall, and we don't want that. We want them walking into his stage, not there. So we want to. Uh, Miss Moss and I have been talking extensively about making sure that. Um, all the students get this awesome experience through there. So the typical, the typical fifth grade beginner band experience is you can rent a flute, a trumpet, a clarinet, a saxophone, or the drums, but bands don't, you don't have any power from that. And what we decided to start doing about two years ago is rather than having an elementary band, we want to have a mini junior high band in fifth grade, and our junior high was a mini high school band. So there's a lot of instruments that you can't typically just go rent from the, the rental company when those when instrument rental light comes out. They give the band and the orchestra that sound. They're also the, the instruments that provide the most scholarships for college. So now we actually have, I'll just call it a mini tuba right now, because we can't give a, a kid that size a tuba, we can give them a euphonium, which is a mini tuba, so that when they get to the high school, they can start marching tubas, and they can start applying to Big Ten colleges for band and things like that. Uh, very partial to that, we have four, uh, four young ladies and gentlemen playing the string bass uh, at Miller, and uh, it's a fantastic instrument. Only the coolest of people would ever play that instrument, uh, so we're glad that we have that uh, going on through there. But again, we, we're going to have to buy some of these instruments so that we can say to the kids, like, hey, listen, we need baritones here. So speaking of getting bigger, that is our percussion ensemble. Uh, Miss Moss and Dr. Gucci will love when I put sticks and mallets in my budget throughout. We thread that throughout, but this is why. Um, to the best of our knowledge, we went out with the second or third largest percussion section in the state of New Jersey. When we went to MetLife twice, we were the largest percussion section there. 
Um, and it, it's just, it's awesome to like walk into a stadium and see your drums on the, your drum section. We already started winter training. So there was the group before we went to MetLife uh, for Division Board Championships. We've already started our winter training, which you're gonna see on the right. Our percussion section right now, don't get offended, Mr. Arlen, because I know you went there. Our percussion section alone is bigger than the entire mainland band. Our percussion section alone is in larger than the entire Oakcrest band. Our percussion section alone is six people smaller than the entire Apsigami band. <laughs> all right, and that's, that's just the percussion stuff. Like, there's all the horns and the other stuff that ground, but it's, it's booming, and the stuff's expensive, and it's also, uh, uh, some of the stuff is a casualty of the supply chain crisis, ordering things to get here. But uh, our indoor program is just exploding. And it's translating to the outdoor, and we're, and we're very, uh, very happy with and, and proud of what's going on there. So any Wednesday or Thursday night you want to come by, we're there. This is my last slide. If you've been to some of our shows, we're having some audio issues. And uh, some of it we can control, some of it we can't control. So the part that we can control, you have two options here. You can buy cheaper microphones. They don't, they'll hold up they don't work as well, but you can, they're pretty, they can handle like kids passing them back backstage, dropping over teenagers, just being teenagers. Or you could buy the ones that are gonna give you the quality that you like, but they're so sensitive. They're so sensitive, they break so easy. So um, we're trying to try and you know, mix it up a little bit, and, 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 but at the same time, they have to still be compatible with each other. That's the first part. The second part is right now, we have maybe one person running the sound for 14 mics in the whole system, so we have to, you know, look at some creative ways and, and stipends and, and uh, stuff to get, you know, hire a sound person for a night or two so that the directors of the show, especially at the middle school, the directors, they need to like supervise middle school kids and direct and they're worrying about sound and lights at the same time and the simultaneous demand is too much. And then again, we're just waiting for equipment to come in for almost a year now for the high school. So the things that we can control, uh, I'm going to address in the budget and, you know, work with Mr. Sweeter and Mr. House uh, to do that. So that's um, the shortest presentation I've ever given, even with that. And I would encourage you, if you're around um, tomorrow, I, you, I, you all got a count of our winter concerts and events. Come into any of the elementary stuff. Kids are doing fantastic. It's not, they don't sound like little kids singing with their class. They sound like little children's choirs. There, there's a very um, focused effort on their musicianship. Uh, tomorrow night is the middle school band's concert. This was their dress rehearsal, which is why they're the, some of the soccer and track kids couldn't be there. And then Friday, the high school choir concert, one of the other things was on the five-year goal was to have an acapella group like a pentatonic style. And acquired harmony is surpassed our expectations. So if you ran on Friday, come out to that concert. So thank you very much. Next is uh, Mr. Ray Dorso, Supervisor, uh, Director, I'm sorry, of Special Education. All right, good evening, everybody. I'm uh, just going to start off with a general snapshot of the department, just to give you guys an idea of how large and complex the department is. 430 staff members total, 157 <laughs> teachers. 200 paraprofessionals, out of which 145, 155 are full-time, 45 are part-time. Um, six behaviorists, uh, actually BCBAs, we're very fortunate to have that level of support in the district. Related to our student population, we have 1,261 students that are classified as special education and related services. And then we have another 140 students that are classified as eligible for speech and language services only. That equates to 16.6% of our total student population. And 50 students are currently receiving services in an out of district program. Just a general overview of the programming that we provide in the district. We start off in the least restrictive environment in class resource, then we go to full out resource, and then self-contained programming. We currently have 38 self-contained classes in the district, and that ranges from preschool disabled, multiple disabilities, emotional regulation impairment, learning and language disabilities. Um, emotional regulation impairment currently goes through K through fifth grade. Uh, next year, we're planning on rolling that up to the middle school. 
Uh, one of our main focuses over the past few years has been related to reading intervention. In 2020-2021 school year, we established two reading committees. Uh, last school year, we trained a whole bunch of SLPs and special ed teachers in those programs. Our focus right now is really implementing those programs, and we're looking at getting coaching to come in and support the teachers with that implementation. Next school year, we're gonna continue with those programs, which are noted here. Uh, for the most part, we're utilizing Wilson programming, and that programming is for students that struggle with phonemic awareness and phonics. And we also utilize Linda Mood Bell programming for students that struggle with comprehension. This is just a quick snapshot of all the staff that we trained last school year. Another area of focus in the special education department is related to transition. And you can just see the sequence that we've um, covered beginning in 2019 to 2020. Um, at that point at the high school, our students only went out of the building three times a year. This current year and next year also, they go out four times a month. And we also initiated this year that students are going four times a year as early as Miller Elementary School. Our, another area is related to social emotional learning. Um, and like I noted before, we implemented emotional regulation impairment programming and also a SEL curriculum called Power Solving, specifically related for students that have behavioral disabilities and needs. Our last area of emphasis is related to our special ed parent advisory group. Um, last school year, we restructured that group. Um, we also um, have a core team uh, Ms. Kim Minshaw and Lisa Vargas are our parent leaders. I just want to give them a great thanks for all the work that they do. We currently meet every uh, first Wednesday of every month at 6.30 p.m. Our next meeting is on the 4th of January. At that meeting, we're focusing on inclusion. And next school year, we plan on continuing the same uh, uh, setup. With that, I'll turn it over to Ms. Boyd. Thank you. Um, I'm not used to talking on a mic. I usually yell. Dr. Gruccio was there this morning. Um, not yelling at kids, just yelling to be heard. Um, first, I just want to thank the board for having me. Um, I'm here to talk about talents. Um, so, talents. We are the first Eagles in the building in the morning, and we're the last Eagles to leave at night. Um, we open at 6.30, we close at 6 p.m. So, in... So just like the district has a vision and a mission for um, the district, uh, Talents 2 has one, and I think it is fully uh, aligned and supported, um, supporting of the district's mission. Um, so our vision at Talents is to provide quality out of school time programming that brings a wide range of benefits to the students, the families, and our EHT community, but also to support school day. Um, our mission is to provide fun opportunities for both staff and students to engage with one another and to explore various areas of academic enrichment. Um, we do that in four categories, and those are positive youth development, health and wellness, art, and then stream. Um, so over the course of the last few years that I've been, um, you know, kind of at the helm of Talents and Aspire, I've been using the New Jersey Quality Standards for After School as a um, best practice and a gauge for what we're doing and the quality and the programming that I'm trying to build. Um, so it includes uh, six different areas. Um, and it's a self-assessment tool. So what I've done is um, worked with staff, to um, kind of grade us in these different areas and then um, come up with plans for how we can make up improvements. So a little bit of history. Um, in June, summer of 2019, Kids Club, if you remember that, um, officially ended. That summer we operated a small and final fun of the sun. I did a lot of cleaning, a whole lot of cleaning. Um, I did some organizing and lots and lots of brainstorming. But then in that fall, with the help of Mr. Santilli and his marketing 
we opened up talents. Um, and then the goal at that point was to one, get a childcare license, which we must have. At that point, we needed to have it. Um, but also to learn how to operate a childcare center in the state of New Jersey. So we were able to do that. That first year, we did the administration assessment, and we kind of found out that we need, needed some processes, and we were able to put those things in place and figure out how we were going to run talents. Um, in 2020, 2021, we all know what happened. So I started out the year with, um, you know, the idea of building the program and quality and all this stuff, and then COVID happened, and it was like, no. Okay, we have to focus on health and safety. We have to focus on indoor and outdoor space because at the time, everybody was talking about social distancing. So keeping um, staff healthy, keeping the kids healthy, and staying open was the goal. Um, and just keeping the kids happy. So we were able to do that. We opened up for full day virtual assistance um, that year. And um, in September, we opened on first day of school when everybody else was virtual. We were there, 7 in the morning to 5.30 in the evening every day. When school district went to a hybrid schedule, we were still open 7 in the morning to 5.30 every day to accommodate students who were on those different schedules. Um, in 21-22, we moved on. We still focused on health and safety because we know that COVID was still a thing. Um, but we also uh, focused on our activities and the quality of the enrichment that we were offering. Um, and then nutrition and physical activities was a big focus. And we provided professional development to the talent staff on how to organize and facilitate large group games. So now that brings us to this year. Um, I'm still, uh, you know, when COVID happened, I lost 13 staff at one time. So getting them back was difficult. It's not just a problem that I had, it's a problem across probably the country, but a lot of people left childcare. Um, so I've been uh, lots of marketing and um, interviewing and hiring and training staff. And um, with the help of the Department of Human Services, they offered, because they realized it was a problem on the state level, they offered a hiring and retention grant for child care workers in the state of New Jersey. We were able to take advantage of phases one, two, and three. Um, and those were the amounts that I was able to um, get from the state. And that went directly to the staff members um, that met the criteria that the uh, Department of Human Service set forth. Um, and then just recently, I think maybe two weeks ago or so, I applied for a technical assistance. Um, I think it's like a scholarship program, they call it. Um, we were awarded um, out of 20 programs, 20 applicants, six were selected, and talents at Slay Ball, um, Swift Slay Ball Complex was selected. So NJ Sack, who is the um, network for out of school time for the state of New Jersey, they will be coming in and providing us professional development at new calls to the district. They are going to do an assessment. They are going to help us with action plans over um, the next year in those three categories. And hopefully, that's where we're going to really see us grow and improve. That targeted technical assistance as a recipient, these are the things that we're going to get. We get a pass to the um, after school conference that is held every year for the state of New Jersey. We're gonna get some curriculum called KIT, which is behavior and inclusion workshops and specify for after school programs or out of school time programs. Um, and then some other things. They're, like I said, they're gonna do the assessment and the action plan with us. Um, so what, yeah, yeah, okay. So here's what I need. I don't need much from the district. <laughs> um, Talents has been self-sustaining since I've been uh, put in place, and that's not a credit to me. That's probably more credit to the staff and also to the parents who trust us with their children. Um, so what I need is, um, in terms of safety and security, um, communication and infrastructure is um, definitely a thing for us. We want to be able to stay in touch with um, each other from site to site, and currently we have four sites, but also stay in touch with um, 
you know, the district office in the evening if there's, you know, an event or something. And then also with each other and with the main offices at each building. Um, I will be coming up for license renewal um, next year, so there's that. Um, I am looking for some more marketing, and I was thinking maybe some outdoor signage to really identify the doors that we use for parents. I think it would be helpful for them to know exactly where we're located. Um, competitive wages for staff, part of my issue with um, you know, getting st quality staff to come on board and stay on board might be related to that, and I've done some research about it. Um, and then those relevant learning experiences that happen um, outside of the classroom, you know, those things that teachers either don't have time or don't have the funds to do. So if you ever come to Talents or even to Aspire, you know, we're 3D printing and there's photography and there's arts and crafts and uh, we have a Minecraft club and we have all types of stuff. We have a walk-in classroom, which is pretty cool. Um, actually, it happens on Tuesdays if you want to see it. Stop by Miller. But walk-in classroom um, it involves uh, MP3 devices that have over 160 academic lessons on them. The students listen to the lessons and then they walk like labs. And after the walking period is over, then they discuss those lessons and the key points of it, or they share with each other what they listen to, which is pretty cool. Um, so um, I'll be looking for um, technology upgrades. We probably need, um, my Chromebooks are getting pretty old, um, STEM-related supplies and activities, and then consumable stuff, you know, markers, pens, crayons, paints stuff like that. Um, so talents by the numbers this year. Um, the target for September was 300 students because I knew that I was um, light on staff. Um, the goal though um, is to be able to serve a minimum of 500. Currently we have 366 in the program. Those are the um, schools that we serve and I currently have 74 students on the waiting list um, all of which are from Swift Slave Law Complex because I just don't have the staff to, um, we have the space, we have plenty of space, but I don't have the staff to remain within ratio. So I'll continue to be uh, pushing that and interviewing um, as often as somebody applies. Um, that's it, thank you. Thank you. Okay, that concludes the presentations for this evening. Thank you. Does any of the board have any questions they want to ask? Uh, yes, uh, Madam President, I have a question. Um, well, actually, just a couple of questions. Uh, the first would be for Mr. Rutledge and Ms. Perrone. Um, we talked about different sports. Um, we pretty much know we have a lot of variety of sports, baseball, swimming, football, crew, et cetera. Um, is there anything that we're looking to add as far as the sports lineup? Is there anything that, that you're thinking of maybe adding in addition to the traditional ones? So uh, uh, this year we're adding uh, volleyball at the middle school levels. Um, so we wanted to add boys and girls volleyball. However, the league at the middle school only offers co-ed. So we are offering the co-ed volleyball for this year. Uh, and I know Ms. Brown is working with the middle school coordinators uh, locally to see if we can add the boys and the girls and separate them as they are at the high school level. Uh, obviously, they, uh, the one thing that we've been working on for the last couple months is the unified sports as well. Uh, so we do have that up and running, thank, thanks to you all. Uh, and that's something that we're uh, trying to organize. And so the, the personnel that we work with outside of EHT is uh, their, their special ed directors and coordinators are not athletic directors. Um, so we do have the, uh, the eye for what is going to work and not work in terms of starting a league. And that's something that uh, Ms. Barone over the summer met with to talk about uh, creating a Cape Atlantic Unified League. Now, how about eSports? So eSports is something that we currently offer. Uh, we do currently offer eSports? And how's it going? What's that? How's it going, good? So it's it's a club. It's not a, a sport with on that side of things, but there is competitions and whatnot. It's something that can definitely use some growth as all technology can. Okay, so we're looking to add volleyball then. That would be the only thing new. 
This year, yes. Yeah. We offer any other sport that anybody that runs outside of, I believe, uh, surfing. Uh, okay. Right, because I have, I was just dropped down quite a few crew, um, everything, the traditional sports. The only thing we really don't have is surfing. Of uh, what's offered locally? We have bowling, I know that. We do. Uh, we, we have golf. Have we do, yeah. yeah. Oh, that's very good. All right, well, thank you. Oh, one more question, I'm sorry. This one is for Mr. Dr. Kadesky. Dr. Kadesky, um, how many rental instruments uh, do we have, and well, what's the approximate yearly cost of the ones that we're renting? The, student, the individual students rent their instruments. Um, a, flute, a, a, a trumpet for a year is about 170. A string bass is uh, 800 for a year. Uh, for the young lady that's renting her string bass, a flute is about 65 per year, and then they can go into various lease purchase programs. So the student rents the instruments. Students rent the smaller instruments. The and we, the only instruments that we don't rent are instruments that we'd want to be an asset, like an actual district asset, uh, so that kids can come through always using that. So so most do rent the instruments then. Yes. If if not all. Okay. Uh, about 75 percent. Yeah. All right. About 75 percent. Okay. Thank you. That's all. Anybody else? Okay. Go ahead. Um, thank you for all the presentations. I just want to say, so there, I didn't see them. Are we able to, did I miss it in Google? Did I miss it somewhere? Did the presentations were? Oh, I put it in there. I'll put that. Okay. Yep. No problem. I just wanted to be able to go back and just to look at some of the presentations and the information that was in it. Thank you. I, I do want to share that uh, Dr. Graham um, was feeling ill. And she had a presentation tonight, so the CTE uh, Votech um, presentation will be at a later date, but I, as I told you to go home. She didn't feel well. Um, one of these things that you have to do. Yes. Um, so give me one second, please, because we shut down and restarted. So I got to. So the state has been releasing test scores one at a time this year. Usually we do this all at once. So um, I, I presented not too long ago about Start Strong from the, from the previous year, and now I'm presenting about the ones that we took this past fall. So a lot of this information and data is going to look the same because it's essentially the same information that we got from the spring assessment um, about our grade level standards and how we're performing, but they, they did this assessment in the, in the fall about Start Strong. So, um, just bear with me, we'll go through this, but it is, it's still useful because it's confirming what we know. Um, it is helping us kind of find this norm of where we are, um, but really trying to figure out how to address our students and their needs um, by meeting them where they are and, and going from now for that progress and growth, which we talked about in our strategic plan, instead of always focusing on that where they should be, let's really talk about where our kids are and how we're moving them forward. So um, this was from the state um, into, in the, in the last fall, they wanted us to do this, you know, because we didn't have the state testing. They want to make sure we understand this does not replace the standards-based assessments that we give locally. It does not replace the state assessments that we give in the spring. Um, but this is just another way for us to have data and information on individual students and give us predictors of how students might perform in the spring. Um, it is about the prioritized prior year academic standards and what students should be working on as they look forward to that test in the spring about standards and that grade level mastery. Um, it's supposed to be given in about 45 to 60 minutes per, per unit, so whether they're taking ELA math or science. So start strong here, we had um, grade four to 10. Um, they had ELA content, so this is just showing you if they're in fourth grade, they were, there was third grade content that they were given, and so on and so forth, all the way through grade 10. 
For math and the grade levels, it's the same, um, and that went through grade eight. So grade eight students were tested on grade seven math content, grade seven students on grade six. The only thing that gets a little um, different is the students in Algebra 1 were given grade um, 8 content, and in Geometry, they did the same thing, but they were focusing on more things that would be re relative to geometry, the study of geometry. So the idea that you could take these, um, this assessment and apply it to what the students are learning this year in Geometry, even though it's based on 8th grade standards. And then um, here for science, grade six um, was all about grades three through five, ninth grade, middle school, and 12th grade was high school. So here is the interpretation considerations from the state. They are telling us that we should not compare this to the NJSLA data, um, but rather use it as an indication of that um, and that, you know, it, it's, they want you to use it in consideration, but to not take it as a total predictive. So it's really just about getting information on students on, on their performance. Um, and that it's supposed to help us with curriculum planning, looking at scopes and sequences, providing professional learning for differentiation, and allowing parents to get those individualized student reports, which will be mailed home in January, for you to be able to see where your students performed. Um, so the department wants to kind of talk about the idea that this is still looking at the impact of the pandemic and that learning loss and that we should always still be doing our local benchmarking, which you know we do three times a year. We do our universal screening process. This is something that we, we do bring in to link it also, so we're able to look that in comparison to the, that information that we get on our students. All right. so. The way that they do this is not meeting and exceeding like we see when we're looking at normal state assessments or our local benchmarks. This is that some support may be needed, um, strong support may be needed, or less support might be needed. So the less support might be needed, the level three would be equivalent to your students who are performing at or you know showing that mastery of those standards before. Some, some support, they're trying to say, you know, that they they're might not be there to mastery, but they have an understanding, and level one, that they might need some extra remediation around those standards. So for ELA across the district, um, strong support is going to be what's in the red, and less support is what's in the green. So I am proud to say that we have higher green in most areas across the board here. Um, it's, it's not um, you know, abnormal in fourth grade to kind of see that, that jump. We know fourth grade is a big transition for students usually. Um, and that's, you know, end third grade where they're finished with those foundational skills. They're really starting to get into that reading to understand and learn and application and that higher level thinking. But across the board, we can see that we're showing that most of our students are in that less support needed. This is um, for sixth grade uh, from Alder and Fernwood. And eighth. And here, this is really hard to see for you, but you have it on your board doc so that you can look at these numbers more closely. But this is uh, broken down by our subgroup. So this is also really important for us as we're, we are looking at curriculum. We're making sure that we're using appropriate resources and that we are um, you know, paying attention to that as we're delivering our curriculum. Here is the breakdown here. And then this is broken down by our subgroup program. So here we're looking at free and reduced lunch. We're looking at students with 504s, ELL students, special education, and then gen ed. So this is breaking that data down for us more. Again, helping with that planning as we're looking and talking with teachers about data and PLCs, being able to look at the different subgroups and what additional resources might be needed. So here's where you start to see some of those reds come up a little bit higher, which is not surprising. Um, you know, our, our ELL and special education population, because this is what we drew attention to when we were looking to our, at our spring state scores, if you remember. So we are trying to focus on some of those resources. Um, Mr. Dorso spoke about a lot of resources tonight. 
um, that they're bringing in in training. And Dr. Shiner spoke about that last week, uh, about bringing in that professional development, bringing in those additional resources for our, um, for our different populations of need. And then the same thing goes for math. So this will break that down for you in that level one, two, and three for the grade levels. Um, here you'll see math is, is a little, um, you know, we have a lot of students in, in higher need in some areas, um, pretty even of distribution in others. As we move up into that algebra one, geometry, algebra two, we start to see that red go up um, where we need that extra support. But that, again, is correlating to what we saw in the spring and, and working with those students. Here's broken out by Alder and Fernwood. They're the only buildings that were tested that have two different buildings that tested. And then Algebra 1 in the middle school um, got broken out as well. Um, and then here's that bigger slide for you broken down by demographic, by race. And then by program again. And here we see that higher rise once again for ELL and special education um, across the board here with free and reduced lunch in section 504 as well, students needing some more support. And then we have science. Um, so science was only tested in grades six, nine, and 12. Here we saw some um, application across where you notice that uh, science, it's the, the, the less support is definitely lower, the more um, support, and some support is pretty high across the board with this and broken out by Alder and Fernwood again. Um, here we have it broken down into our subgroups and by program. Again, our highest discrepancy with ELL and special education. Um, and so once again, all of these test results help us with providing those more intensive interventions, identifying our students in need, working with our directors and supervisors for professional development, getting uh, more resources, um, discussing those tiered interventions that we're providing, not only outside of the classroom, but more importantly, how are we doing that differentiation within the classroom? So adding in those embedded PLCs this year across our buildings was really important to give teachers that time to work together in their school day to talk about this information, talk about planning, because it's a big, it is a big adjustment to scope and sequence and curriculum. We are trying to meet the needs of, of a wide variety of students in the classroom, and differentiation is not easy. So giving teachers that time to work together um, and support one another with that, um, and we did add additional personnel with the support of the board this year to be able to help support teachers with that in the classroom and then also providing additional services for pullout outside of the classroom. We're continuing to do our universal screening process. We're, um, over this past month, I've been in the faculty meetings, did about half of them so far, working with the data team over the past few months of how do we take that universal screening data and put it into the hands of our teachers how can we make it more tangible for them um, and be able to help support through our building interventionists and our reading specialists to really support this work that we need to do to help our students show that progress. So we're gonna continue with our data analysis, continue with providing interventions, trying to bring in the best programs, trying to bring in a lot of professional development and support around this so that we can truly meet each child where they are and keep that progress and growth going. Um, we're working on some parent engagement planning. We have a night that we're planning in January that we'll be sending a Save the Date out for to talk about these programs, to talk about interventions, and to talk about how we can continue to grow that home and school partnership to help our kids. And that concludes my presentation. Dr. Grucio, is that why there's a half a day tomorrow for, for professional development? Okay. 
Well, tonight was special. We had a lot of students here, and we also have student reps. Do you have something to uh, discuss with us? Yeah, we have a few things. Um, so, uh, the high school hosted a uh, blood drive sponsored by the American Red Cross, and uh, students uh, would walk into the gymnasium to donate blood, and it turned out to be a huge success as the Red Cross uh, District of EHT issued a thank you for generosity to the student council for hosting it. And uh, last weekend, as uh, some of you guys may know, was uh, uh, when Egg Harbor Township um, presented their yearly show, and this year's was Blith Spirit and Present La Laughter at the auditorium. And many students uh, spent a majority of their school year preparing for the show, so it was a huge accomplishment for them. Um, tomorrow, uh, more student athletes who have spent years training for a milestone will announce their um, athletic commitment to universities of their choice. Um, the uh, All South Jersey Choir, uh, through a highly selective application process, selected four students from uh, the Ed Carver Township High School, and um, they're going to be uh, representing our school at the um, January concert at <coughs> Washington Township's uh, Performing Arts Center, which is a wonderful uh, thing. Uh, the Teen Center uh, promoted healthy habits and spreading positivity by hosting the annual Giving Tree Party to over 80 students, where uh, students spent their time creating wholesome holiday cards for uh, a local retirement home, and they were also treated to pizza and other snacks. And uh, two well-rounded students have been uh, selected this week for uh, the Upstander of the Week Award. Um, Gabe Longo, nominated by uh, Mrs. Stevens, and Barissa Gonzalez Ramirez, nominated by Mrs. Leo, as they have demonstrated hard work inside and outside of the classroom. Uh, now I'm going to pass it to Cami for her half. Hi, everyone. So um, this past, um, actually it was in November, but I, I believe it was November 19th, um, the high school had their annual FCCLA holiday craft fair, and it was a great success. And aside from that, like um, Ms. Perone and Mr. Rutledge were saying, Unified Sports um, started up again, which I'm part of, so that um, unifies um, students with intellectual disabilities and without intellectual disabilities together on the same team. So I'm part of Unified Basketball, and I have a really great time doing that, so that started up again. Um, as well as the staff of the year were announced in each of the schools this week. And then um, on the 15th, we have the winter concert. Um, and that would be in Fernwood Auditorium, and that will feature the Fernwood and Alder school bands. So you guys can go out to watch that. As well, on December 15th, the Medical Science Academy at the high school will be going to Rucker, Rutgers University's Cadaver Lab and their medical facility, so they'll be able to, um, they'll be exposed to real life medical procedures and simulations as well as having the opportunity to attempt um, administering medical treatments to simulated robotic patients. So, yeah. Thank you. Okay, we need the finance and operations updates from Mr. Smith. Uh, there were no questions this week for finance, so we have no updates. Okay, Mrs. Sullivan. Finance and operations met on December the 6th at 6 p.m. Uh, board members that attended were Mrs. Gilbert Floyd and myself virtually and Mrs. Salagi in person. Administrators attending were Mr. Beck, Mrs. Germaina, Dr. Gruccio, Mr. Smith, and Mr. West. We were outnumbered. Food service department, Mr. Beck uh, provided insightful update which test uh, touched on the supply chain issues that we're having, effects of inflation on purchasing, staffing, and the pending New Jersey Department of Agricultural Administrative Review. Uh, we've always done very well in the review, and we don't expect anything to uh, shift that. St and uh, we also uh, reviewed the student participation in school lunch. Mr. Beck reviewed the current free and reduced lunch percentage, which stands at about 43%. Transportation Department, Mr. Smith briefly discussed the open coordinator position and noted that the board will see a large increase in the Transportation Department budget due to the high um, cost of fuel. So we're going to have to anticipate that for this coming budget. Uh, 
facility department, Mr. Smith noted that several HVAC projects are continuing to move forward, but some work has been postponed until summer due to delivery delays. I think you can see the overall picture of everything. We're getting products later. We have uh, problems with them, you know, not having enough employees. It all is just an, an effect, another effect of the, pandem the pandemic. Uh, the district, um, where am I? The district will receive an SDA grant totaling $182,697 that will be used for a maintenance project. In addition, the facility department is also working on a ROD grant submission for January that will be submitted to the SDA. In the business office, Mrs. Germaina reviewed the status of the prior year unified sports funding. We wanted the figures on the funding in case uh, we did not get the grant again. Uh, the board was uh, unanimous in saying we wanted to keep United, the unified sports, no matter what uh, the funding, what funding came in. Uh, Mr. Mena also discussed the open uh, business office position that's on our, pers our personnel agenda and the changes that were made to the current budget based on discussions from May 22nd to July 22nd. Uh, Mr. Smith outlined potential costs to the district if funding for the teen center was cut, which the governor has withdrawn that. He is not going to close our teen centers as of now, I believe. That has not changed. Uh, Mr. Smith reviewed items that are on the agenda for approval, including the monthly reports, tuition, transportation contracts, professional contracts, um, and I think that's it. Do you have anything more to add? No, I think that was everything. Great. Thank you. Okay. Any updates for curriculum, Ms. Moss? Yeah, thank you. No? Okay. Mr. Price? Okay. Thank you, Madam President. Um, I'm going to give the curriculum report as chairman. Um, our last meeting was held on December 6th at 7 o'clock p.m. Length of meeting was an hour and 10 minutes. Uh, Ms. Borgiano was there, Mr. Della Barca, and myself, Mr. Price. Administrators attending, uh, Ms. Moss, John Tolan, George West, and Dr. Kimberly Gruccio. Uh, subjects discussed, routine agenda items discussed were professional development and field trips. Mr. Tolan spoke about a potential private provider for preschool with the rumor to beginning in February. He has been working to meet with any interested private providers to see if they can meet the requirements for the grant. Administration is continuing to explore and will have a presentation to the full board in January. The committee also discussed the Special Education Parent Advisory Group and saw resources shared by Mr. Dorso. Um, all information for these meetings can be found on the district website. Uh, data from Universal Screening was shared, as well as the plan to continue to monitor progress and growth of students from cycle to cycle. The committee was given an update about convocation from the middle school, expressing some of the challenges and successes, especially projects like the pumpkin decorating contest. Um, the completed health letters were shared and available for review. Uh, the, topic of, the topic of a moving up ceremony for eighth grade was discussed. The next step is to take the ideas to the middle school administration. So there's something happening and uh, we're making progress on it. So happy to report that. Uh, also discussed was the upcoming Parents Night for Title I, but also to give overviews of programs at the elementary and secondary levels. Uh, date, time, and place of the next meeting will be determined after reorganization. Um, possible topics have been discussed, if not at this time. Um, I would just like to comment and as well, Ms. Moss has done an excellent job with the curriculum this year, and you did a great job with the Start Strong assessment tonight. Because a lot of that goes hand in hand with what we've done on curriculum. So I just like to say I, it was a great year, and I appreciate serving with everybody that's on the curriculum committee with me. So I, I'd like to just mention that. Ms. Bongiorno and, um, and Lou uh, Della Barco, thank you for the hard work you've done this year on the committee. So that concludes my report. Thank you. OK, we have a field trip to uh, make a motion on? Motion, motion Dr. Ireland. <laughs> Second, Ireland? <laughs> okay, any discussion? Roll call. Mrs. Bongiorno? Yes. Mr. Dallabar? Yes. Mrs. Gilbert Floyd? 
Yes. Ms. Hyman? Yes. Mr. Ireland? Yes. Mr. Price? Yes. Mr. Seppi? Yes. Mrs. Sullivan? Yes. And Mrs. Slog? Yes. Okay. Is there any personnel report for the public? Yeah. Yes, Ms. Sulagi, there was one question from the board regarding an adjustment with Unified Sports and it was the Unified Newspaper Club from Alder. Uh, that refers to a club that's now being absorbed under the Unified Advisor Program. So we still compensate any advisor when they work for any amount of months. So this person worked three months at the beginning of the year, September through November, and typically we split it up 10% per month. So the adjustment was for 30% of the original stipend amount. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Okay, we need a motion for personnel items 7.2, 7.9. Mr. Price, I'll make that motion. Second. Roll call. Oh, discussion? <laughs> Roll call. Mrs. Bongiorno? Yes. Mr. Della Barca? Yes. Mrs. Gilbert Ford? Yes. Ms. Hyman? Yes. Mr. Ireland? Yes. Mr. Price? Yes. Mr. Seppi? Yes. Mrs. Sullivan? Yes. And Mrs. Slog? Yes. Okay. Dr. Crucio? Okay. It gives me great pride to introduce to you for the first time in public um, our brand new Egg Harbor Township employees. We'll begin with Mr. Brian Dunkelberger, who's a teacher at the Swift Sleigh Ball Complex. <laughs> Lisa Veltri, moving from part time to full time power professional, Swift Sleigh Ball Complex. Shelly Brazy, uh, moving from part-time to full-time power professional at Barton Town Preschool. Christina Sullivan, moving from part-time to full-time power professional at Swift City Wall Complex. Rachel Brown, power professional at Davenport. And Christopher Hernandez, our new security guard at Miller School. Well, welcome aboard and congratulations and thanks for uh, staying with us tonight. Hopefully you learned a whole lot about our school district. That's just a little bit of peace, a little peace. Okay, welcome to all our new employees. Um, Mr. Santilli, do you have any updates for policy? No, I do not. Okay, Mr. Ireland, we'll do your report. Awesome. So um, our policy committee, uh, Help was held on Tuesday, December 6th, and it was only uh, 35 minutes long. Um, board members attending that was myself, uh, Mr. Ireland, Mr. Seppi, and Ms. Uh, Hyman, and Mrs. Salagi. Also attending was Mr. Santilli, and my audience is not attending. And um, <laughs> others is uh, Mrs. Amy Halkalko. And we went over, the following policies were, were old business and required a second reading by the policy committee. No edits or changes were requested at this time. So the policy 2415.50, Davenport Complex Title I Parent, School Parent and Family Engagement. Policy 2415.51, Miller School Title I Parent, uh, School Parent and Family Engagement. Policy 2415.52, Alder School uh, Title I School Parent and Family Engagement. Policy 2415.53, Fernwood Middle School Title I School Parent and Family Engagement. Policy 2415.54, High School. Title I, school parent and family engagement. Bylaw 0143.2, high school, school, high school student representative to the Board of Education. Policy 3161, examination for cause. Policy 4161, examination for cause. Policy 3216 and 4216, dress and uh, grooming have been updated to reflect best practices for two, uh, teaching staff members and to assist school uh, districts in uh, establishing expectations for the dress of teaching and support staff members. Policy 5460, high school graduation is a replacement and requires two readings as the New Jersey State Board of Education recently adopted revisions to policy 5460 to include updated language and provisions from code. Policy 5337, service animals, service animals was reviewed by the policy committee for discussion. Policy 8600, student transportation, was discussed by the policy committee with the recommended edits for a single reading revision. Um, like I said, our meeting only lasted 35 minutes because we are the best policy. Um, but I also have to just extend this a little bit more, Mrs. Salagi. Um, I, I just want to kind of piggyback on Mr. Price, what he said to his committee, but I must express how proud I am for the policy team and the hard work and that, that was completed this year in the committee. So far, we did 64 policies, 
seven regulations and abolished 11 in a very, very short time in our committee. Okay, that is very huge. The vision that I had when I first took over as chair was to clean up our old by uh, bylaws and policies that were outdated and weren't applicable anymore, some by more than 20 years old. First, I'd like to miss, uh, thank Mr. Santilli uh, for always being willing to go to the extra mile and to deliver impeccable work for our, our uh, committee. You're always proactive, accountable, and willing to support those around us in Edgar Township School District's mission statement in mind when we do our policies. Reliability is hard to come by, so thank you for uh, someone for, for being someone the team could always count for. I'm great, uh, grateful for all of your hard work. The entire team thanks you for everything you did for us as you move on to your other school district. Um, it, was, it was a pleasure working with you in the policy committee. Now to the rest of the team, thank you because we are the best uh, committee out there. And that's because of Ms. Hyman, Mr. Seppi, Mrs. Halk Elko. Uh, we, we're, uh, basically policy is always pretty hard. It's always a heated discussion, but um, we did it as a team and we were very uh, cordial to everybody and we were very respectful and we did it as a team. So thank you guys for doing that. That's all. Okay. Thank you. Yes. I just would like to say yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that I added up all of the numbers of the policies that you read today and it came to eight billion three hundred and fifty nine thousand trillion point three. <laughs> and I'm horrible at math. <laughs> I'm just messing with no, that was a lot of numbers you read. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, we have some new business which is to approve uh, the PACE 2022-23 grant application. Need a motion? Motion. motion. Mrs. Gilbert Floyd. I'll second that, Mrs. Sullivan. <laughs> <laughs> Any discussion? Roll call. Mrs. Bongiorno? Yes. Mr. Del Barca? Yes. Mrs. Gilbert Floyd? Yes. Ms. Hyman? Yes. Mr. Ireland? Yes. Mr. Price? Yes. Mr. Seppi? Yes. Mrs. Sullivan? Yes. And Mrs. Slog? Yes. Okay, now we're going to open to the public, but it's all staff, almost. <laughs> Does anybody from the public have anything they'd like to say? No. Okay, then we need a motion to, oh, does any board members have anything to say? Oh, oh yes. Um, Mr. Mr. Della Barca and Mr. Ireland have something. Just a brief report, Madam President. We had our countywide meeting last week. It was very well attended at um, uh, Weymouth Township Elementary School. They did a su superb job of hosting our program. And our next meeting is February 1st. It is a virtual meeting. And the, the, all the information will be forthcoming, I'm sure, from the state and from me as we get closer to February. In March, March 8th, we have the eighth grade dialogue of students from around the county, uh, location to be determined, and our end of the year dinner and election for new officers is May 2nd, and that uh, location will also be determined. So that's all I have at this time, and thank you. Thank you all, and all of you who attended our last week's meeting. Uh, it was good to see everybody, and I think it was a pretty well run meeting. The topic was really very good, and uh, they did a, pr a great presentation from Rowan. Thank you. So myself and Mrs. Salagi attended the New Jersey School Board Legislative Committee on December 10th. It was three hours and 36 minutes long on our Saturday morning. Um, so I won't go through every single thing because there's uh, seven or eight pages of notes, which I will supply to you guys tomorrow morning. And maybe we upload into Google Docs um, because there's a lot that goes in there. But some good uh, key uh, points that have been um, already signed into the law is the school mapping data stuff that requires the Board of Education chief administrators of uh, the school district to submit critical incident mapping data to local law enforcement. Basically, the governor gave $6.5 million in federal uh, American uh, Rescue Plan funds to actually collect and digitize basically the building blueprints so that if anything were to happen, anybody can see it at any time, right, real time data instead of old blueprints going through. So that was good and then there's uh, just uh, there's tons of bills that are on the governor's desk. Um, a good thing for uh, staffing shortages, which is um, a little plug that we did. We complained to the county and then to the state, but they made a bill after we uh, complained a bunch about it, but teacher advertising campaign. 
so after I got Dr. Purnell's little ear, he uh, made it into um, a bill. Basically, it will direct the BOE to establish an advertising campaign um, to attract candidates, and it basically about a couple million dollars will give, be given to districts so that you can at least blast it out for advertisement for any kind of teaching shortages. So um, it works. Uh, Non-CDL drivers for um, school buses permit certain persons to operate the Type S school buses. Um, educator scholarship program establishes New Jersey educator scholarship programs for people that um, were homegrown, kind of born into the district, and then give them basically a kind of a scholarship program to that. Expanding the vet uh, vet teach program, and that's a pilot program uh, to facilitate teachers vet, uh, certifications from veterans so that they can become teachers. Um, there's just uh, a lot more that goes on, but we also talked about the SDA reform that we wanted to talk about. Um, they brought it up on uh, that there's going to be a seek an amendment for that to kind of uh, make it a little bit easier to apply for and to receive fundings. Uh, they talked about a lot of the fundings for uh, buildings over 100 years old. Um, so that that's coming up. A lot of buildings are over 100 years old. So um, try to use that SDA reform for that. Um, they talk about security drills with, and students with disabilities, so kind of a bill that goes out there so that if you were to have your, um, your fire drills or anything like that, you kind of pre-know where your students with disabilities were there so that they can be alarmed to loud noises or whatever. Um, but that's basically all I want to give because we could be here for a long time. So thank you, if that's okay with everybody. I can go through. You guys, all right. Right. I'm a little leery with that SDA money because, you know, you sign a contract so you don't have to pay back and then they take it anyway. So I have a problem with that. So that really has to be investigated before we even entertain it. And Mrs. Sloggy, you know, on the telephone, there's uh, almost every district that had some uh, concerns about that because it's like, hey, we're going to build a building for a couple million dollars or not even a couple, a lot of millions of dollars. And then all of a sudden they pull out of the contract and there's no more grants or or anything and then guess what it's on the local district so um that's definitely on there and it's something that's on the priority for the legislative committee well it just makes a contract like no one void so anyway um if nobody else has anything else to say or do you no okay i need a motion to adjourn motion second all in favor aye we're done Thank <laughs> you.